I started thinking about adding atrial fibrillation surgery to my regular open heart procedures long ago, before I even started doing minimally invasive surgery. And we're talking probably 2001, 2002. Um, I realized that there were emerging tools that allow us to treat uh, patients who are already on our operating room tables with atrial fibrillation and to do something good for them. And uh, that relationship has uh, evolved and matured and now we are really able to make an impact, I think, on patients with AFib who are coming to surgery anyway. There are two types of AFib patients that come for surgery, for valve or coronary surgery. One type is the kind that they know they have AFib and they've been told they have AFib and they're on medications and they've never been able to get rid of it. The other kind is the kind that has no idea. And uh, those are the interesting ones that you have to introduce the concept. And once they understand what the risks of long-standing atrial fibrillation that's untreated, what those risks are, uh, they uh, are very interested in getting something done. So for me, it's kind of a uh, personal vendetta against what is truly an atrial myopathy, which basically means it's a disease uh, of the atria. Just like we talk about ventricular myopathies, meaning poor heart function and failure and things like that, this is not just an arrhythmia, this is a problem with the function and which will lead to detrimental effects over the long term. It's a quick extra 15-20 minutes, whether it's on pump or whether it's off pump sometimes, you know, when we're doing coronary surgery um, or opening up of the left atrium or not opening up and we explain all the different variables. Uh, and patients really sign on. Um, and then when we see them back, you know, AFib is a hard problem to, uh, to control uh, right away and some of the results can be a little bit iffy early on. But uh, we follow our patients for, for a long time and um, when we do the longer term follow-ups, we find that many of them uh, are able to get off their drugs and, and get off the blood thinners and things like that and they really do appreciate it. I have several patient stories of patients that uh, I've operated on who had problems with atrial fibrillation and were very symptomatic. I have this really interesting uh, electrical engineer who uh, came to me uh, for not concomitant but lone AFib uh, surgery and he had never had a catheter ablation, um, which uh, basically is usually the first step. I communicate with him every year, or my team does, and he's always offering to come with me to the meeting. And if I had asked him to come today, he would have been right here and been a live uh, uh, testament to the fact that he can be on a treadmill and, and run and, and do all the exercising that, that he really wanted to do but was inhibited uh, by his AFib.